that's one. You're talking what? logic. Yes. You're, no, you're, logic. You're, you're talking lo- uh, logic. Yes. But you can't talk logic because logic is not logical. It's not logical that 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 the prime minister is giving arms to Hamas. It's not logic. It's not logic, Rabbi. When Fatah, okay. It's not. It's not logic when you ha- when you see when you see the, the the DVD, the CD that was put out at Gush Katif, when young young children were begging, they had arms missing and legs missing, and they were taught this was a special video given to the Knesset. There's no heart and there's no logic. You're talking very nicely. I agree with you. So what is, what is your advice? That's a qu- no, no, no. That's You're, a full line. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay. We're, we're here, and Mr. Dr. Gelman asked you a question, and it's the same question. And it's a question that was asked last year. We had a, a talk where the question was asked, what would the Rebbe say? We want to know what the Rebbe would say. We want clear directions. We want to, we will do what the Rebbe says. But we need to, we need to know clearly what what the Rebbe will say, because you're not talking logic. There's a poll here. There's, there's a poll. There's a poll here. I'm sorry, there's a poll. I'm telling you exactly what the Rebbe says and what he would say when he has it all along. He won't change his mind. This is the Rebbe's approach. That is what the Rebbe says, and that's what the Rebbe would say now. And that's what I told Mr. Sharon that the words of the Rebbe are eternal. The Rebbe said because his words are based on Torah, and there will be no change. Anybody else? Yes. Um. What would be the view of the Lubavitch of uh, people in the diaspora having the right to vote because Israel is a Jewish state, so we don't have to be physically there, and that way we already get numbers up before you can get a, another generation of population in to keep the democracy? That we should be able to vote. No, that's, not something. <laughs> that, that's something which belongs to the, the, government. To the, the constitution of the country. It's like uh, if, if you could be a Jew and you want to uh, be an American or you were born in America, then you would have another uh, citizenship. You have the right to vote in America. We have your citizenship. and they will help you upon the land in which he dwells, and it should be that I, what I meant to do to them, I will do to you. When, when the Almighty told Joshua that he should enter to Israel, saying that Israel belongs to Jews, if you take out you know what the Kumish is, right? The Bible? Yes. It's quoting from it. It's quoting from it. I want to quote. I want to quote the first commentary of Rashi on the first passage in the Kumish operations. Where Rashi says over there that the Almighty says that I created the world, and when I created the world, I divided the world to different countries. But as such, I have the right to take it away from one country, give it to another one, because I created it. For a period of time, he said, Rashi said that the Almighty says that I gave this part of the world to this group of people. Now the time came that I want them to leave, and I want to take and give this to another group of people. So Hashem, as the creator of the world, as the one who is running the world through this very day, He has the right to make that change. And this is what He says over there, that now, the time came that these people have to go to other countries and we, I want to give this away to the Jewish people. So this is what I said, that Hashem is the owner, He's the creator, and He has the right to make the change. Anybody else? This might sound like a stupid question, but you've said... Um, you said... <laughs> you said a number of times that it says in the Torah that God gave Israel to the Jewish people. I continually ask that question to myself, whether God did give that state to the Jewish people. We do know that it was given to Bnei Israel, and Jews, you know, the European term Yehudi from the tribe of Judah. So what I'm just trying to work out, and I continually work out, and I'm just wondering if the Lubavitch Rebbe has a point on this, is that even though the Jews are representative of that tribe, or flow from that tribe, and that tribe happens to be kings among the, uh, of the tribes, 
Is it still fair for us to say that it's given to the Jews or it's given to Israel? It's given to Israel. Bnei Yisrael are Jewish people, period. There's no other thing that Jews are called Bnei Yisrael. There's no one tribe of Jews. The Jews consist of 12 tribes. And the Jewish people are the owners of Israel, because that's what it says on the Torah. It doesn't belong to the tribe of Judah or the tribe of Reuben. It belongs to every single Jew throughout the ages, as it says very clearly in the Torah, the Torah is Sechem to all generations to come. And every single Jew who is born a Jew, who converts later to be a Jew according to Allah, he owns Israel entirely. There's no such thing that belongs to one tribe. It belongs to every single Jew all over the world. And I'm sorry to say, I don't understand what you're talking about. That's contrary to what it says in Torah. And it's, it has no basis. Yes? Anything else? If you go... If you go to... Son was born from the Jewish mother. According to Galacha, he is a Jew. Only if he's born from a Jewish mother. Yes. However, he is not circumstanced. What? Circumstanced. If he doesn't belong to the God. He, even if he didn't have a belief, he was also a Jew. He is a Jew. A hundred percent Jew. That one Jew who is supposed to be taken he out to, of... He's a Jew that has to have correction, but he's a Jew. Yeah, but there's the Jew who's supposed to be taken out of the uh, out of the whole um, community and the stone down to the to the desk. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> if we will go, well, okay. <laughs> if the Jew do not belong but believe in the God, even if he doesn't believe in God, he's still a Jew. You know, about the season, we are accustomed to telling Hasidic stories. So I would like to finish off with one short story of the Rebbe, which this will give us an understanding of what I started off with, what the Rebbe's aspiration was, what his ambition was. This story I heard from the young man who, with whom the story happened. This young man was traveling on the train from Montreal to Toronto. And being that it was in the afternoon, as it is custom of many of the Baba to see them when they travel on a train, a plane or a train or a bus, and it's during the daytime when people can put on film, so we go around asking people and reporting to them, being that you're them anyway, you're not doing much, to give us five minutes and put on the film, which many, many people respond very positively. This fellow said that he was sitting on the train and opposite him was sitting a brother person. At first he wasn't sure that he was Jewish, but then he felt he was Jewish and he started speaking to him. And in the course of the conversation, he offered him to put on a pair of film. At first, for a moment or two, he hesitated, and then he said, yes, I'm ready to put on the film. This fellow thought I'll have to teach him how to make the blessing over the film and how to wrap it around on his hand. This fellow the person said, just give me the film and the cinder, and you don't have to help me at all. And he was watching him, he said he took the film, he made the broth as a pro, he wrapped around the film as if he does it every day. He took the cinder, and he said the Shema, he said the Amitah, the Shema, the Esrei. But while he was davening, tears were streaming down his face, down his cheeks. In his davening, he took off the film, and he sat down, and he tells this young man, the Lubavitcher boy, he said, let me tell you something. He says, when I was a young boy, about nine years old, my family lived in Crown Heights, which is the area where the Rebbe lived. And my father was a chassid, but not from Khan Lubavitch. He was a chassid of another group, but of course we had a high respect for the Rebbe that was known for such a great tzaddik. At one point, my mother became very ill. And after all the analysis and the diagnosis, the doctors came to a conclusion that you would have to have surgery. So as Hasidim would do, they would not perform such an act before they would get the consent and the Baruch of the Rebbe. So my father told my mother that although in Abba Bawashi Hasidim, but being that we live here with this holy tzaddik is, I want to consult with him before we make a decision. Made an appointment, and he tells his boy that the night came when he had to see the Rebbe, he asked me to come 